Hi guys, Andy here. So I've got another head to head for you today. It's the uh, the new Moto G third gen on the right against my old Nexus 5. Now, in many ways, the Nexus 5, I wouldn't call it top end, but it was high mid range, I suppose, with Snapdragon 800, a, a 2.3 gig uh, quad core Crate 400, an Adreno 330, and 2 gig of RAM. Whereas the Moto G on the right is on a Snapdragon 410, it's got a 1.4 gigahertz quad core. Cortex A53 and it's got an Adreno 306 and only one gig of RAM. So it is quite a mismatch, but actually they're both uh, they're both valued at a similar price at the moment. If you went onto eBay, you could get a Nexus 5 for around about 150, 160. Um, and the new Moto G third gen is about 160 pounds from clove.co.uk. So I thought I'd put them head to head and we'll see uh, you know how how close is it, how what's the difference. We'll start off with my usual um, Angry Birds opening test. Now you may have seen the Moto G versus the Xiaomi already. I see the Nexus 5 just ahead. Yep, yeah, the Nexus 5 is in first. Fairly, fairly clear victory. But um, we're going to do it once more at least because I normally do a best of three. And the splash screen is first on the Moto G this time. Still the Moto G. This might be, there we go, yeah, this is where the Nexus 5 comes through. And again, it's relatively clear victory. For some reason I can't get the, the back buttons up. We'll give it uh, we'll give it one more run because that third, that, that second one was actually quite close. So we'll give it the third run just to see if the Nexus 5 makes it right. The Nexus 5 is ahead again this time, still ahead. So I'm guessing, yep, the Nexus 5 wins three out of three. Fair enough. Right, we'll move on to the benchmarking. So you can see here it's a bit of a mismatch by the actual specs. And again, you normally you can tell the speed the test runs is how well a device is going to score and the Nexus 5 heads off into the lead. As usual, I'm not going to make you watch the whole test. So we're going to jump ahead to where the Nexus 5 finishes. And we see that comes in with almost 3,000. So that's a pretty respectable score for a device of a a year and a half, almost two years old. I've actually jumped ahead 25 seconds so we can get the final score of the Moto G because that is pretty slow. 1500, not the best of scores. What surprises me though, it is, I mean, that is a, quite a low score, but actually the performance of the device, how slick it feels, really doesn't match that. And this is where I would say, yeah, benchmarks aren't that useful. Um, now we're going to move over to the speaker test. Here we go, Nexus 5 first. Tell me where to go, tell me what to do I'll be right there for you, right there for you Tell me what to say, no matter if it's true Tell me what to say, no matter if it's true I'll say it all for you I'll say it all for you, for you, for you I used to be the type of kid that would always think the sky is falling Why am I so different than... Move on to Brian McKean try. That was an interesting one. I think in that one you can actually tell the difference uh, more than the music perhaps that the the Moto G just has that better rounded, better volume, all around a better speaker. Now we've got uh, spoken voice. Essentially gave organizations like GCHQ and the NSA a free reign. Essentially gave organizations like GCHQ and the NSA a free organizations like GCHQ and the NSA a free reign to go do go do mass surveillance it also uh, overturned a lot of the rules and laws and now we're in the surveillance it also uh, overturned a lot of the rules and laws and now we're in the situation where people are I don't know if this is noticeable on the video there but the Moto G is louder and um, they both obviously have mono speakers but the Moto G front facing gives it a bit of an advantage I suppose uh, and generally it just just does have that bit more volume so normally we'd go outside and do the GPS test but actually I figured you know what the Nexus 5 mine's a bit bugged it doesn't really give a good representation I will tell you right off that the Moto G third gen very quick um, I did do it against the Xiaomi and it, and it beat the Xiaomi so we move on to the browser test and 
I think I had some uh, Wi-Fi issues here. They're both connected on Wi-Fi. You see the Moto G kind of almost reset there. It does happen sometimes. Our router seems to kind of, I don't know, just freeze the uh, devices that are connected to it. Then obviously it comes back at the same time. And you could argue perhaps the Moto G then snuck through first. So a bit of an odd one because of the uh, router issues. So let's just move on though and see what we get from going to the NFL.com website. The Nexus edges through there. Yeah. I think we can fairly clearly see the Nexus 5 won that one. You could call it one all. You might not want to include that first one maybe. So let's see what what happens with the final test. Loading up Engadget. Oh. I think the yeah, the uh, the cookie agreement comes up a long way before on the Nexus 5. For a second it looked like the Moto G might have snuck through. We seem both scrolling, they both seem Pretty smooth, no issues there. So there you go. Um, interesting because they are they can be bought secondhand at a similar price. You've got to think the Nexus Five, performance-wise, probably is still the better device. Um, although the speaker very good on the Moto G, and actually to be honest, the design and build quality feels a lot better on the Moto G than the Nexus Five. So I guess it comes down to to personal choice really, personal preference and whatever it is that you're looking for in your device. Um, interested to know your comments, let me know down below. My name's Andy, I'll catch you all again soon.